we want these roofs to be installed right. We want the norm to be 50, 60 years. And you can have the best product in the world, but if it's not installed correctly, it's not the product's fault. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. If you're a metal roofing installer, whether that's for residential homes or commercial buildings, it's important to set your business apart in your market and help your business grow. So how do you do that? Well, one way is by installing engineered metal roofing systems from a manufacturer. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what is engineering and why it's important for you as an installer. Today I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. Yeah, happy to be here, Glad. So we're talking about you know, how engineering can help a contractor's business. First of all, can you kind of explain what engineering is and why that would matter to somebody? Yeah, so engineering is a broad term. Basically engineering is testing, any type of testing that's performed on a product to see how it does, right? That's the, the simplest version out there. But that encompasses a lot of things because a panel might be engineered for one thing but that doesn't necessarily mean that one thing is going to meet all your requirements. That's the, the the simple answer of what it is. It's basically going out testing a product, seeing how it performs, having a certified laboratory, put that in writing for you. So we either did X, Y, Z, and then seeing if that's going to meet your needs based on whatever project type you're doing. Okay. And when it comes to the metal roofing industry in that context, uh, manufacturers go out and they have panel profiles tested over certain assemblies using certain accessories. And if a metal roofing installer uses that panel profile within those tolerances with those accessories over that assembly, they get that testing and engineering passed on to that homeowner building owner. That's correct. So at Sheffield Metals, if you're using our material, you have access to our testing and engineering if you install it exactly per that test report, that engineering is valid. And you make a very good point there that, and, and just want to reiterate that all the accessories that are used in the tested assembly have to be used on the project for that engineering to be valid, right? If you're doing a one inch fastener, it has to be that same one inch fastener. If you're using a certain type of clip, it can't just be any metal roofing clip. Say it's a two inch panel, it could be any two inch clip. It has to be the two inch clip that was tested. Uh, the one caveat to that is, is you can always do more, you can't do less. You test a 24 gauge system, that engineering would still be valid at a 22 gauge system because 22 gauge is stronger. It wouldn't be valid at a 26 gauge system. Another example, same thing about panel width. The narrower the panel, the stronger it is. So if you test an 18 inch panel, you can go down to a 16, a 14, a 12. You can't go to a 20, 22, 24 inch wide panel. So the whole idea behind testing is to take a design product, a manufactured product that is intended for a specific purpose, but until that is actually tested in a real world scenario, there is no proof that it will actually perform those duties that the designer, whoever that might be, thought in their mind when they designed that product. That's the whole purpose. Exactly. Got to see how it does, right? If like I could tell you, my, my, I could tell you it's great all day long. That in 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee, right? You got to have something showing how it does. Again, it, you know, going back to the testing the clips, you use a different fastener. It might perform better. You use a closer clip spacing. It might perform better. It, I mean, there's all these different avenues of, of different ways you can test things based on the performance that the manufacturer is trying to achieve. It's very much a balancing act when it comes to testing. You want to get a panel that is going to perform as best as possible, but also not price it out of the market, right? You know, you take, you put your clips at six inches on center, you're going to have a very strong panel when it comes to uplifts. It's also going to be a very expensive system to install because you got all those extra clips and not to mention somebody to put them on at six inches on center. So it's it's finding that balance between performance and cost and trying to work that angle of it. Now I wanna talk specifically to the contractors out there. I mean, you wanna know what's in it for me installing an engineered metal roofing system. Um, it's gonna take more time to figure out what's required for that project. You have to buy specific accessories, follow specific instructions, and no doubt it's a little bit more difficult than if you just went and installed it as you do any project. It's definitely gonna probably cost you a little bit more, 
right? Because the accessories used in tested systems, they usually aren't the most economical ones, especially when you come into things like mechanically seamed systems. We just now started testing systems with fixed clips. Most of the time, you know, our systems are tested with expansion clips. Well, those expansion clips are two different gauge metals. They're two pieces. Somebody has to put them together. They're going to be more expensive than a straight up fixed stamp clip. And quite honestly, usually we have a closer clip spacing that, you know, what people are sometimes used to putting, you know, their clips on at. Our furthest clip spacing is, besides open framing, is two foot on center. You know, that's our furthest clip spacing. We have clip spacings that are closer. Because again, it's trying to find that balance between performance and cost. Yeah, so let's look at residential and commercial both. For residential systems, why is engineering going to be helpful for a contractor when they're selling a residential job? Number one, homeowners are getting more and more educated when it comes to their purchases on pretty much everything. They're doing their research before they write that check. You find out about all the benefits of metal roofing and everything that's you know touted as far as cool colors, energy efficient, 50 plus years, that's gonna be pretty much the norm with anybody that you're competing against that is, that's looking at a metal roof, right? You're using a PVDF paint system and I got a metal roof, okay, well, I get, I get all those things with a metal roof in general. But now if I can set myself apart as a, as a roofing contractor by saying, listen, not only can I give you all those things, but now I can also show you an engineer report stating how we are going to put your roof on and that, you know, it's going to meet the criteria for your area, that's definitely a way to set yourself apart. Now, I will say when it comes to residential engineering, most of the time we're only doing uplifts for residential engineering because not too many homeowners care about their air movement in between the panel seams of their panels. You know, they don't care about air infiltration, things like that. They want to know it's not going to leak and it's going to stay on my roof, right? As far as performance value goes. So, you know, testing for commercial roofs, which I'm sure we're going to talk about in a minute, is going to be a lot more than what we're talking about on the engineering on the residential side. When you have the same product as your competitors, you have to, you know, if there's anything that you have that can set you apart and make you stand out a little bit, you know, you can use that to your benefit to help promote your product and probably your price. Because again, it's going to probably be a little bit more expensive because you're going to do things, you know, closer spacings and whatnot. But here's what you get for that extra money. And it's not just me telling you that I have a great product. I have I have a, a piece of paper with a stamp on it that says that it's been tested to show that it is. I think there's one other element when it comes to residential builds is location. Um, some locations, some regions have local codes that you have to adhere to. And sometimes certain engineering, certain testing, certain product approvals are gonna be required. Without a doubt, you know, states like Florida, you're not going to get away with doing it without having engineering in general. It's expanded to a lot more places than just Florida now, especially along the Gulf Coast, you know, up the southern East Coast. They have the whole fortified program that they're doing now with the insurance companies. It is it's beginning to, to take hold in a lot of areas where it wasn't really the standard before. Anytime a code changes, things don't get easier. Code changes, th things become more strict and you have to you know, try to keep up with that as well. Even if you're not offering engineered systems now, you know it's definitely important to stay up on to the changes of the codes and things like that. So if uh, they're proposing items that are gonna be changing, you can make sure that you're prepared and you don't have downtime because you know, you're not set up for the new requirements that are gonna be in place. So let's look at that commercial building side. You know, how does uh, having manufacturers engineering help you win more commercial jobs? Yeah, well, it's almost a requirement, right? Um, if you're doing a commercial job, it's gonna have a architectural spec and that spec is gonna dictate everything that you're gonna to have to meet if you wanna put a bid on this job. So that's the responsibility of the manufacturers to make sure that we have all that stuff so you can provide it when you put a bid in and you know you're able to take those projects some specs are definitely more encompassing than others you know sometimes i've seen specs that you know they just want the gauge of the metal called out they haven't even picked a profile and then you have other specs that are asking for everything and anything whether it's applicable to the system that they're that they're using or not uh not only is it good 
to have the engineering, but then have people that understand the engineering to tell you whether or not it's actually going to be applicable to what you need, right? There's two types of uplift tests, really. There's UL580 1897, which is a test for over solid decking, plywood B deck. Then you have ASTM 1592, which is a uplift testing for over open framing. Can't tell you how many times there's 1592 specified in specs with a solid decking. So it's not only important to have this information to, and, and things to provide to our customers, but also have the people around to be able to help them navigate that information that that might not be the world that they live in daily. We got to provide it and we also got to be able to help them navigate it if they need it. Well, that does speak to the importance of having a manufacturer that can help you with those engineering reports, not only provide the information, but be that partner to you as a contractor, as an installer, as you're trying to bid jobs, win jobs, um, having information on all of this different engineering information is is super important. Yeah. And, you know, if you have it up front, you know, it can help you estimate your costs better so you can have a competitive bid. And then hopefully that will help you take more projects because it takes some time to put a bid proposal together, especially depending on the size of a commercial project. High bid doesn't usually win it. They aren't out there like, oh, who has the highest price? We'll go with them. That's not usually the case. You got to be competitive. Um, so if you know what products you have to use and spacings and things like that for the engineering they have available, I can now kind of quote and estimate my project better to, to be as competitive as possible. Talking about a manufacturer like Sheffield Metals and engineering, it also helps you complete projects that have weather type warranty requirements. Can you talk to me a little bit about that, you know, as a commercial contractor? At Sheffield Metals, we only do weather type warranties on commercial projects. But if you come to us and you say, hey, you know, I have a job, there's no spec, there's no requirements, but they want, they do want to do a weather type warranty, we require it for our weather type warranty program. Minimum UL90 rating, uh, especially depending on where it is. If it's someplace like Florida, you know, obviously that's not the case. But, you know, you get into middle America, things like that, where maybe there isn't anything dictated on this that particular project we require a minimum ul90 rating to be had for uplifts on all of our weather type warranties because again it goes we promote long-term metal roofing weather type warranties it's it's a lot more about flashing and trim as far as keeping the building leak free than it is about clip spacing right or types of clips that 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 holds the roof on it's not going to cause it to leak we promote long-term metal roofing we promote best practices and in our opinion if we're going to put our name on something, you need to provide the whole package. Again, you have to provide a system that is, you know, installed correctly to at least to a minimum standard, right? And that's UL90 is what we consider the minimum standard. That is something we provide because we want these roofs to be installed, right? We want the norm to be 50, 60 years. And you can have the best product in the world, but if it's not installed correctly, it's not the product's fault. Promoting best practices, promoting long-term roofing, it's a requirement for weather type warranties. There's, there's not more stringent requirements needed. We have our own minimum best practice requirements for the program. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jeff. Really appreciate the info. Absolutely. Then. If you have any questions, please comment down below or visit SheffieldMetals.com to get all the engineering info for all of Sheffield's profiles. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.